so now it's finally time to bring in our uh, our template. So here, uh, it's a good idea to sp specify public function like so. Okay, so let's bring in our template. So I downloaded the template and it's in here. So I'll open the folder where it's in. And these are the files right here. So I'll just copy the whole folder. Copy the folder. And then I'm going to go to my catalog here inside public. Oh, no inside app inside views so all your uh, viewer files are going to be in here so let me paste in here so i'm pasting the whole folder in here and then let me change the name to something easier like uh, so this is where all your uh, themes are going to be in case you're making themes so if you want to make a different theme you simply put another folder here and put different files in there so this one will be catalog. That's the one. That's what I'll name it, catalog in there. So these are the files in here. Now, the first thing we want to do, uh, if you notice, all these are HTML files, but we will be putting PHP in here. So I want to rename all of these to PHP. So I'll start with this one, just uh, rename. Yes. I wish there was uh, a quick way to rename these files, but you just have to go one by one. Or somebody, as a programmer, you can create a, uh, a script to do this for you, even in PHP. Oh, sorry, I'm making another mistake. I'm supposed to write .php at the end. Oh my god. Uh, copy that, paste. There we go. Okay, that looks much better. PHP. Uh -huh. Dot PHP. And the, this one. And then finally, this one. Okay, great. So we have PHP files here. And the homepage is index.php, of course. So as you can see, the, the path to this place is app, views, catalog. Okay, great. So now we can come back to the home controller. So this is the controller, home controller. And in here, we can tell it to display uh, a particular file because the, the user selected this. So we know that the person wants to load the home page and no other parameters are sent. So it's on the index. Okay. Now, the thing is, we want a function that will do the viewing okay that will run the view so this function will be simple it will be like this public uh, function view that's what we we'll call it and then we'll put our view in there whatever the path to our view is like so so since we are loading the index uh, function here we're just going to say this view like so and then put our view now, here, what we will do is simply check if a file exists. So I can copy some stuff from uh, here because this is pretty much the same thing. So let me come back to the home inside view here, like so, okay? So if file exists, now we are looking for a file inside the views. So views like that, and then we don't need the string to lower here. All right it's view that we want to put there because this information will be supplied by you so it can be trusted so views view.php great so if this file actually exists all we need to do is uh, require it or include it sorry include like that and that's it so if the file exists include it however sometimes we want to put some data let's say there was data from the database we'll put it inside a variable called data like so okay data but sometimes you want to put a static page which doesn't require any data so to avoid getting an error if we don't supply data we're going to set it to an empty array like that so that in case we don't provide this one it will go with the empty array so this data will be used in any of our views to have the data that we want. Great, and that's it for this function. So all I need to do here is say this view and then provide a view. 
Now, remember that our files are in, uh, where is this, catalog. That's views catalog index.php. That's the file I'm looking for. So since, if you can see here, I've already provided the path app views. So the only part I need to provide is the middle part without the PHP. So the middle part would be from views, it would be catalog slash into index. Okay. So let me do that now. Catalog slash index like that. So if I put this here, it makes sense. Then this file can be found. So let me put a semicolon at the end. And so let's see this happen in action. So let me refresh the page. And you see our page has been loaded. Catalog Z, photos, video, and everything. But this doesn't look like the website we want, which is this one uh, by far. So what's wrong here is that um, the CSS files and all that are not being properly read, okay? And now, one more thing we need to do before we handle that is that this view function will be used by all, uh, all controllers. Any controller you put here will need to use this view because it, the controller needs to display something. So instead of having to put this function in every controller that we create, we are simply going to extend it, okay? So what we will do is we'll go to core. In core, there is a controller.php. This would be the main controller. So I'm going to cut this information from here, cut it from there, and then we'll go to controller.php. Now in here, I'm going to create the main controller. So I'll say class controller, like so. And then I'll put this function in there view. That's all the function we need for now. So then when I go back to uh, home.php, I can simply say extends controller like this. So now I still have access to this view here. So every controller that extends that will have access to this function right here. So well and good. So let's refresh. Nothing has changed. So how do we get, if I go back to my folder here, you see that all the CSS, font awesome, and JavaScript are in here, all the assets are in here. But lucky for us, we've created an asset folder, which is right here in the public section where everything is readable, okay? So what I will do is I'll come out here and copy all these things. In fact, I'm going to cut them from here. Go to catalog, which is the main folder, open public, and inside assets, I'll make another folder called catalog in here. You can name it whatever you want. I'm just as naming it this because I'm assuming this is the name of our theme. So I'll paste them in here. Okay, great. Now the problem comes in when I want to access this because it's relative to the public folder. So what I want to do instead of having to type, let me come back here first of all. Um, if I refresh, nothing happens. So let me open, let me go to catalog here, back to the... Um, the app folder inside views and catalog. Let me open the index.php. So this is our index.php page, the page that came with the template. Okay, now as you can see, it's referencing some stuff here, like some CSS and all that. And we need to tell it that these files have moved to there. Now these are many files, and especially if uh, the website is large, uh, each time you change the location of the website, you have to go through and edit these. So to avoid that, we have to create a universal value that will update automatically where this asset folder is. So the best way to, the best place to put that is in the config here. So, so the config is inside the core uh, folder. So right in the config here, let's define some variables, right? So we can, def we can make uh, definitions here. So we use define because it creates constants. So for example, we can say website underscore title. So we can create a website title here. We can call it uh, my website. And the advantage of defining a constant is that this constant is available everywhere, no matter where you are on the website, in the class, in the function, whatever it is, you can simply type this and it will give you that value. So this is good, it has no scope. 
And now, one more thing we need is to define the assets folder, right? So first of all, we need to define the root folder and then the assets folder as well, because there are different instances we need to use some of those. Now, in the interest of saving time, I've done something here. I've added some code. So I'm just going to put a comment here and say uh, root paths. So I'll paste that code there. Now you go through it and then you can type it like that. So what I've done is this here. I'm getting the server name. So I'm trying to recreate what I am seeing at the top here. So the server name is localhost. But once you upload your website, it will change to something else. And then there's DIR. Now DIR means the, the folder in which this file exists, right? Now config is inside uh, this whole path, core, app, and all that. So we are getting that. And then we add a slash at the end. Now, what this string replace is doing, it's replacing all the strings, uh, this backslash. If you go to Windows, Windows has a backslash for folder definition, but Linux has a forward slash, as you can see in the URL there. So all I'm doing is I'm telling it uh, because server, this DIR will show the, the directory based on Windows, which will have slashes that are like this. So I'm telling it to replace that with this. I'm putting double slashes because if I put one, it will think this is a special character. And so you see the colors have changed here. But if I put two, I'm telling it to escape this one to say this is actually a string, not a special character. Okay, so I'm replacing these slashes and then I'm putting HTTP at the beginning and then the server name, which is localhost. So if you upgrade your system to HTTPS, this is where you would need to add that. So you put an S there in the config there. So server name and DIR. So let's see what this gives us. So let me come down here and simply just say echo um, path. So let me echo path at the top there. So once I echo this, this is what I get. So the HTTP localhost, but then I get the DIR name, which is starting with C and do that. But these have been replaced as I did there. But I don't need this part here. I want to copy this. So I just want from localhost direct to catalog and then the rest here. So luckily for me, there's a variable that contains that very value inside server. So that variable is um, not this one, or is this, this document root. So I'll put that one there. So I'm replacing path is equal to string replace document root path. So I'm replacing the result of this and removing this thing from there. So let me see what that does. And as you can see, we are getting there. And then finally, I need to remove this app core and send it to the index page instead. Okay. So let me come back here. Actually, if I cut all this, it's just better when this is all inside the config file. Uh, I could put it in the index.php page, then I don't need to worry about all this stuff here but config is better to put it there. So I'll just leave it in there and put this final part here. So I'm going to call this uh, root. So we're replacing up core with public, that part with public. Then we will have our path. So let me echo root now, like that. So let me refresh that and you see, there we go. So we have that thing there, but this one is root and, but I want an assets one as well. So assets, assets is going to replace that one with um, assets. Oh no, public assets, public slash assets like so. So echo this one now. Let's see what it has. And there we go. Okay, so this is great. Now that we have this assets thing, we can use this variable everywhere on our website to make sure that things load properly.
okay so let me go back to my index.php page inside views so to give you a sample of this i just go here and paste it now i need to add my php tags because this is still php and do an echo like this and put it there and close like that okay so this is in the assets folder now this is a bit long so i can replace all this this php uh, echo with an echo sign just like that and it will still work you can even remove these spaces here like so and now let's go and refresh this page oops it's still not working now why is it okay now that's because inside our assets folder we have catalog folder there so i forgot about that so say kata catalog slash like so this should work now oh there we go so now we are seeing something here uh, this is running but it's taking too long so i'm guessing that the javascript uh, file isn't loading so i'm guessing it's because of the same problem like this catalog so let's go down and look for all the places where we are supposed to replace some stuff now to make it easier we're going to use our search and i know that uh, the places that need replacing have got a source parameter like this source and then like that so what i'll do is i'll just say find all and then move one step to the right and then it's going to it has selected all of them right now so i can just paste like so so let me come back here ah there we go something uh, is visible now okay great but uh this doesn't look too good why oh because i've zoomed it in okay there we go so as you can see everything uh, seems fine now this is uh, very good now the links here uh, leading to .html pages. So let me just change that real quick. Let me just find everywhere where it says .html and find all. Control H to replace, replace with empty string. Yes. Okay, so let me refresh now. Now I don't see an HTML at the end there, which is good. Mm -hmm. And now I don't even need this home paper, whatever this is. So I don't need that. As you can see at the top here, this was not found, but it still loaded the index page. So let me remove all that. Okay, very good. So even if I remove everything, I still get the home page. So now it's telling me undefined variable URL. Okay, so errors are good, gives us a chance to fix something. So let's go inside app.php online 39. So app.php online 39 right here. So it's telling me that uh, URL doesn't exist. So this is because I haven't put any parameters here. So we have to account for that. So instead, what I will do is I will create a variable here called URL. URL is equal to, and then I will copy this and put it there then I can put URL here instead of all this like that great now this gives me an opportunity to use that uh, if statement that I like to use I'll simply put a question mark here and then it becomes an if statement so the if statement is that if this statement is true let me put something here and then a full colon and then uh let me put home here like so so in order for you to know what's going on better here let me put is set here uh is set like so and put this in brackets so what's happening is that if you put a question mark at the end of uh, uh this kind of thing you have you've turned this into an if statement so it's asking if this is true whatever you put here if it evaluates to true uh so whatever you put here must evaluate to true or false so if it's true this will be equal to whatever is here if it's false it will be equal to that okay great this way we don't have errors even when we have nothing there we go home and dry